Chair now recognizes Mr. Mafume of Maryland for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My thanks to you and uh, Ranking Member Conley for calling us together for this hearing. And um, I want to try to cover a few things in the short time that I have. Madam Director, thank you very much for being here as well. Um, I, the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia made a point that all federal workers, despite what people think, are not here in Washington, D.C. In fact, I've got quite a few in my own district, whether it's the Veterans Administration, uh, Health and Human Services with a large operation in Baltimore, the FBI, the Social Security headquarters are right in the center of my district. And what I have found in working with uh, federal employees is that their positions can sometimes be uh, misconstrued to suggest that they are not doing all they can when in fact they are doing what they can while they can in every way they can to, to, to do their job. Federal employees, um, more than anything else, have no tolerance for other federal employees that are not doing that work, that give them a bad name, a bad title, a bad assumption. Um, and fortunately, the American Federation of Government Employees has been working over and over again, year after year, to, to deal with those things that people don't understand about the federal workforce in order to make sure that they do. Now, I just want to say to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Sessions, who chairs the subcommittee of which I'm ranking member on, that I really look forward to having uh, some dialogue uh, with the director on the subject matter that came up earlier that I won't revisit. Um, but I look forward to that. In fact, the gentleman uh, from Texas and I are going to be holding hearings later on waste, fraud, uh, and abuse. And I also want to commend the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Connolly, for working over and over again to put in place a bipartisan OPM Reform Act, which I'm honored to, to co-sponsor. And I, uh, the gentleman has, has made a point to make sure that he does in that bill all that we should do to help federal employees, but also to make sure that there is real efficiency. Um, I don't know, Madam Director, if you're familiar with a bill that sort of came and died last year. It was the Bipartisan Preventing a Patronage System Act uh, to make sure that we didn't have a situation where patronage was growing in the executive ranks. Uh, by people who were holdovers from one administration or another. And I'm, I don't know whether OPM took a position on that, but I, I wanted to raise it. And uh, Mr. Chair, I have uh, in front of me letters of support for the new version of that from the National Federation of Federal Employees, the National Association of Assistant United States Attorneys, the Senior Executives Association, and the Partnership for America, and I would ask unanimous consent that they all be entered into the record. Now, uh, Madam Director, I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to get back to the early comments that were made here, <clears throat> which, if true, are very, very troubling. And they're troubling to Democrats and troubling to Republicans. And I know that you are somewhat prohibited from what you can say on the record in this open forum. But I would hope that you would take this next moment or two to let me know and to put on the record for those who may not know just what OPM's policy is for individuals who are engaged in racially insensitive or racially offensive conduct, as well as those who have uh, allegations against them for being sexually insensitive uh, and those who are, uh, have been found to have made anti-Semitic remarks and jokes and other remarks aimed at Latinos and Asian and Pacific Islanders. How are they treated and how are those allegations treated? Thank you, Congressman, for, for that question. And let me say at the outset, like I mentioned in my statement, that I take these issues very seriously uh, and I'm committed to a workplace uh, free from, from harassment. Uh, the reports are alarming uh, to me as well as they are to everyone else. 
uh, and they do not represent OPM values, nor do they represent, Congressman, the work that I have done in the past historically uh, before coming into government. We are conducting a very careful and thorough review uh, at this point, which is why I am not in a position to be able to share details, but would be happy to share more in a, in a closed briefing. Uh, but as a part of that, and we continue to find ways to make improvements to our hiring processes, to our vetting guidelines, uh, and so that is related to these two particular matters. I will say uh, more broadly, uh, we are uh, a leader in uh, supporting the efforts within this administration to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion accessibility. Our FAV scores, the new DEIA index within the Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey, um, has the government-wide score at 69%. We are above that at OPM. We have promoted uh, uh, employee resource groups, um, other opportunities for individuals to be able to express themselves, to, to, uh, uh, to support and promote differences, um, to create an environment that is fair and inclusive to everyone. And, and, and that is a goal of what we're doing inside what we call small OPM and what we seek to promote um, and the work that's captured in our recent DEIA report across government. Okay, I would just ask, and I assume that that also includes uh, sexual insensitivity and sexual allegations. Absolutely, and, okay. absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Mr. You Chair.